For 10 years, the question of whether to be a property mogul or a saving superhero was an easy one. With interest rates at a mere 1% and property and price inflation and rental yields close to 5%, bricks and mortar investment was a clear win for those with a heavy bag of cash. But with interest rates rising to 5% and the threats of housing market crashes, what's the right choice for now? And what's it going to be when these things change? Other factors such as your mortgage amount are now becoming much more influential. Introducing a new Google Sheets tool where you can plug in factors such as investment amounts, property price, rental income, and see which one is the winner over your investment time frame. This is useful if you have a ton of wonga to invest, but also it's interesting as it gives you a micro view of investment decisions, which can help us understand why some are predicting a housing market crash. So interest rates in 2009 fell to 1% in the UK and similar rates in the USA and Euro area, and they remained low for a decade, although they looked like they were coming back up in 2015-2016. They fell in 2020-2021 to as low as 0.1% in the UK, USA and Euro area. India rates are generally higher, but the same trend can be seen. During this time, obviously, returns from savings accounts were almost negligible. So if you had some money to invest, property was a good bet, especially when the house prices rose by an average of 4% between 2009 and 2019 in the UK and USA. However, with interest rates now about 5% in the UK, USA and Euro area, is it worth investing in property or are savings going to give you a better return at a lower risk? Now, this all depends on multiple factors, like the amount you have to invest if you require a mortgage, the mortgage rate, as well as purchasing costs and taxes. And of course, your expected rental income and how much you could expect to receive in a savings account. So that's why we've got a tool where you can play with all these factors and have a think about what's best for you. We're going to have a look at the expected income from property and compare this to savings. In this example, there's an initial large cost to purchasing a property, but the monthly income is larger. So if you're investing for four years or more, the property is likely to give you better returns. So the main inputs are your investment amount, which will be the amount that you can put into a property or the bank, the property value, which is the price of the property you are buying. So the mortgage amount and the loan to value are then automatically calculated for you. So this is a 50% loan to value. You're putting 100 grand, property is 200 grand. So you're putting in 50%. We then have the savings rate, which you can plug in an easy access account or something you'd receive from bonds or expect from the stock market. At the moment, there are bank accounts with instant access for 5% or even... 7% with some restrictions. So that's a pretty good risk-free amount. Next is the mortgage rate, which is likely to depend on your personal circumstances, including the loan to value. But a good rate would probably be just above the savings rate. And as I said, like, these are rates that you can get now, but the idea is all of these numbers can change, but you can change them. In this tool, we're focusing on the monthly return from purchasing a property rather than buying and selling for profit. Therefore, expected rental income is the only source of income from property that we're considering. Purchasing a property has two sets of costs. The first is fixed one-off costs, such as taxes and fees. For the UK, stamp duty is a significant cost, especially if it's an additional property, because it will be an additional 3% tax on top of other stamp duty. So if the property is over 250k, you also have to pay extra you then have your solicitor's fees and other, I don't know, state agent costs, etc, etc. Add all of that up for you. And that is our initial outlay. And we're counting that all as costs. The second set of costs is the running costs. So things like the service charge you'd have to pay if it was flat, annual service charge, annual ground rent. Maintenance is a bit of an unknown. Um, you don't know what's going to go wrong with the house and how much you're going to have to put in it but you can put an estimate based off the property that you might be looking at. So we've put in here £500 per year. The mortgage interest is also included here. This is just the mortgage interest payments. 
your mortgage may be higher as you should be paying off the principal. Uh, but this is money back to you. It's not really a cost. You'll get this back when you sell the property. So yeah, it's not included here. So we're just counting the mortgage interest. So they're the only inputs required. These ones in orange, these ones in white. All these other ones are calculated for you. And, and these should help you kind of assess what you've put in. The first one is the gross yield. And that's the rental income over the property value. This is often quoted by the estate agents. So it's a really clear, clean calculation that doesn't take into account any other costs of purchasing the property. No one-off costs, no mortgage calculations, etc. So they'll be saying to you, oh, you can get 6.8% on this. Looking at the actual yield here, which could be something that I've made up. What it does is it looks at the rental income minus any mortgage payment and the running costs. But then it's divided by your principal rather than the property amount. So it is your income, your rental income minus your mortgage payments, so your actual income per year, and then divided that by the principal amount, and I'm also taking off the fixed costs. So this is more like your actual yield within year one, which here it's giving you 8.58%, which is a good rate. And you see that 8.5% is higher than you would get in savings, which is why over time your property will be making you more money than, than savings in this example. And you'd expect it to be higher than the savings, otherwise it would definitely not be worth investing, um, especially with the additional risks, unless you're totally counting on property price inflation. Right, so anyway, rental income, this is looking at it per month and rental minus mortgage. So this is how much money you're actually getting in the bank. Now is probably a good time to mention all of the caveats. Uh, let's scroll over to here a little bit more. This tool is designed to help you think about the different aspects. It's not intended to be financial advice. Always seek professional advice and conduct research on any decision that you take. There'll always be unexpected changes, charges, etc. This tool does not take into account inflation, of which property price inflation is a key consideration, or risks such as renters defaulting, and also selling costs gives you a good steer on whether you think it's worth it or not. I've just taken you through what you can change, so let's have a play. We're going to have 100k to invest. Um, this could be pounds or rupees or dollars or whatever. I haven't put the currency in here like for a reason because it doesn't matter you know what your currency is so let's go back in time we've got 100k to invest we're going to get a property for 250k um, our interest rates let's go back in like 2000s early 2000s um, and we're going to have a savings rate and a mortgage rate of like literally just like one and one percent um, and and rental income we're going to put down maybe we only get about 600 pounds per month so you can see here when this is the case look how much property is making compared to savings your savings is only going to make you one percent per year so you are only making from savings literally like a grand a year which is not a lot for 100 grand right where else the property you're going to be making 600 a month minus only uh, what's the mortgage amount? The mortgage amount is going to be pretty minimal. We only pay like 1.1%, so again, just over a grand a year in order to, to be given 150K. So, so that's pretty good. So your mortgage costs are low, your rental income's high. You'll make the, how much are we spending on um, property purchasing costs? That 10 grand, we're making that 10 grand back that it cost us to purchase the property within like two years so property will make you more than savings after two years after 10 years savings will have made you 10,000 well rental income would have made you 37,000 so you'll be like 27 grand better off by having a property if it's going to be a 10 year investment because that's what it was like 10 years of low interest rates, how things have changed. So let's have a look now. 
to keep everything else back. Savings rate, we're now going to get a nice 5.5% off our rate savings. But our mortgage rate is also going to be higher at 5.79%. In this calculation now, <laughs> look, our mortgage is so expensive. Our mortgage payments are eight grand a year and our rental income is only six grand a year. So we're actually losing money. <laughs> Literally just hoping for the price of our property to continue going up by more than how much we're losing every year. So yeah, that's why they then need to whack up the rental income. So this is doubling the rental income and still property is still not making you any more money than just putting your money in a savings account. So yeah, five times higher interest rates really does have a big impact on that buy to let investor. Let's look more at that rental income and how these other kind of the principal and the property value, how they make it make a difference. So we're going to keep that as we've got a principal of of 100k to invest but our question now is going to be is it always not worth purchasing or if we buy cheaper property our mortgage rates are going to be lower is that a bit more realistic so in the uk uh, you can actually buy a flat in burnley 400k so in which case you don't need a mortgage oh not a million 100k so m without a mortgage amount that's going to drastically reduce our, our monthly outgoing. So we're just really paying for the property running costs and, and the property purchase costs. Like nearly all of the rental income is profit. But are you going to get be able to rent it out for 1200 in Burnley? No. Burnley, the average monthly rent is actually 550 pounds per month so here uh, we can see that your rental yield is 5.8 which is slightly higher than savings and your actual yield is 6.2 percent so that's good you are getting more money than savings but you've also got to pay off this property purchase costs which is going to take a while to do when you're only getting 550 a month and you've spent five grand on purchasing the property so this example here where you're buying your nice flat in Burnley the property will start making you more money than savings but it's going to take 21 years uh, next example we're now going to go from the cheapest part of the country to the most expensive we're going to buy in London in London property price you're probably going to be have to pay 400k for just a flat in London but the average rent is apparently 1500 to 1600 pounds. I think people living in London may dispute that you can get somewhere decent for that. But yeah, you now got a loan to value of just 75%. You are forking out an incredible, how much you're paying on your mortgage? Yeah, 17 grand a year for your mortgage. Your yield on the property is 4.6 percent so even after even before taking into account how much your mortgage is going to cost you that's four point you're getting less <laughs> than you would from savings so as you can see here your property has cost you a lot and you're making less every month so you are never going to make more money from property compared to savings unless you you're just completely relying on the, the value of your property, like skyrocketing up. Anyway, I hope you found that interesting. I hope that wasn't too negative on purchasing property. As I said, it depends on so many different factors, which is why it's quite nice to have a play with these factors and see which ones do make a difference. And in the next video, I'm going to show you how to, to build it yourself, show you all the calculations behind it, um, and can talk more about that, all of those factors that, impact your decision a little bit more and then because you will be able to build it yourself you can adapt it further for your needs you can change the length of time that you're looking over etc uh, also just you know maybe learn some cool spreadsheet tricks or just head over to bloomfieldanalysis.com slash sting and download it yourself it's currently for free 
but I uh, would appreciate a click of the subscribe button and yeah and, and watch the next video thank you goodbye